This is Point of Inquiry for Friday, October 6th, 2006. Welcome to Point of Inquiry. I'm DJ Grothy. Point of Inquiry is the radio show and podcast of the Center for Inquiry, a think tank collaborating with the State University of New York at Buffalo on the new Science and the Public Master's Degree. CFI also has branches in Manhattan, Tampa, Hollywood, and Washington, D.C., in addition to 11 other cities around the world. I want to quickly tell you a little about the Center for Inquiry because sometimes it's hard for people to wrap their heads around exactly what we're all about. Center for Inquiry is the headquarters to a number of advocacy and educational organizations all devoted in their own ways to advancing CFI's mission to defend science, reason, and freedom of inquiry in every area of human interest. These organizations headquartered here, the Council for Secular Humanism, PSYCOP, and the Commission for Scientific Medicine, among others, through education, research, publishing, social services, and campus and community outreach, CFI really works hard to present affirmative alternatives to the reigning mythologies of the day, affirmative alternatives based upon the scientific outlook. Now, every week on this uh, podcast, we try to look at the big questions facing our culture through the lens of the scientific outlook. We focus mostly on three research areas. First, we look at pseudoscience and the paranormal. Second, alternative medicine. Third, secularism and religion, the intersection of science and religious belief in our society. We look at these three research areas by drawing on CFI's relationship with the leading minds of the day, including Nobel Prize winning scientists, public intellectuals, social critics and thinkers, and renowned entertainers. Before we get to this week's guest, I want to welcome some new CFI campus groups that have begun forming, working with us on campuses uh, since last Friday's show. Uh, These are campus groups that work with us to advance science and reason at their schools. These are new groups forming at Niagara University, University of Calgary, Obafemi Awalowo University in Nigeria, and University of Wisconsin in Platteville. And now, before we get to today's guest, Sam Harris, to talk about his best-selling book, uh, Letter to a Christian Nation, Tom Flynn asks us, Did you know? Did you know who said, with the apathy that exists today, a small, well-organized minority can influence the selection of candidates to an astonishing degree? That was Pat Robertson in his 1990 book, The Millennium. Did you know that in 2004, 48 out of 51 United States Republican senators voted with Pat Robertson's political action organization, the Christian Coalition, 100% of the time. That's according to the Christian Coalition's own scorecards of elected officials. Only one Democrat did the same, Zell Miller, who has since retired. Did you know that according to a 2004 survey of 2,500 voters by the Pew Research Center for the People and the Press, 80% of respondents stated that they mostly or completely agree with the statement that we will all be called before God on Judgment Day to answer for our sins? Did you know that evangelical pollster George Barna has found that Baptists have the highest divorce rate? Also, the National Religious Identification Survey confirms that Baptists have the highest divorce rate. They're followed by Pentecostals and Seventh-day Adventists. The world is under assault today by religious extremists who invoke their particular notion of God to try and control what others think and do. One magazine is dedicated to keeping you up to date with analysis that cuts through the noise and the surprising courage to appear politically incorrect. That magazine is Free Inquiry, the world's leading journal of secular humanist opinion and commentary. Regular contributors include Richard Dawkins, Wendy Kaminer, Christopher Hitchens, Peter Singer, and Sam Harris. Their views are reasoned, thought-provoking, and to some, unpardonably infuriating. Subscribe to Free Inquiry today. One year, six controversial issues for 1995. Call 1 800 458 1366 or visit us on the web at secularhumanism.org. 
it's a real pleasure for me to have back on Point of Inquiry this week, Sam Harris. He's the author of the New York Times best-selling book, The End of Faith, Religion, Terror, and the Future of Reason. It's back on the New York Times uh, bestseller list this weekend at number 12. He's a graduate in philosophy from Stanford University and has studied both Eastern and Western religious traditions, along with a variety of contemplative disciplines, for 20 years. He's now completing a doctorate in neuroscience. His work's been featured very widely in the media, the New York Times, L.A. Times, San Francisco Chronicle, the Chicago Tribune, The Economist, The Guardian, The Independent, The Globe and Mail, The Toronto Star, and on and on. And he contributes regularly to Free Inquiry, the magazine of the Council for Secular Humanism. He joins us on Point of Inquiry today to talk about his new book, also a bestseller, number seven on the New York Times bestsellers list this weekend. It's called Letter to a Christian Nation. Sam, welcome back to Point of Inquiry. Thanks so much, DJ. And I just want to tell you that uh, what you guys are doing with this podcast is great. I think... uh, You've got some fascinating uh, other people on here, so if people don't like me, they should listen to people like Dawkins and uh, other uh, <laughs> luminaries you got on, on your podcast. Well, thank you for saying that, Sam. Uh, in your first book, The End of Faith, you offered kind of a rallying cry for atheists and secularists, rationalists all over America. A lot of people read that book. And it's still having an impact. I told you one of the times we were chatting off the air that uh, I was at this cocktail party in Chicago. It wasn't work-related. Of all interesting things, it was a cocktail party with some famous uh, leading magicians. Uh, Not that I'm one of them. It was fun to be there. But uh, everybody spent the whole evening not talking about magic. You'd imagine that. But talking about your book, the claims you make in your book, the dangers of religion, religious extremism. Yeah, it, it's really been a word-of-mouth book to, to a great degree. I mean, it's, there's nothing else to explain the fact that it has been a bestseller for as long as it has, because there, there has been very little media. I'm getting more media now in association with, with my second book, but The End of Faith was very much a, a grassroots success, and, and that's, uh, that's a great thing. And you wrote End of Faith not speaking to religious people. Mostly you were writing to the rationalist reader who who would nod their head emphatically yes to what you were saying. In Letter to a Christian Nation, rather than uh, attacking religion in general, you attack Christianity specifically, and you say that you're writing to Christians. Are you really writing to Christians, or are you also kind of giving a nod to the secular pro-science people, people who want, want to see you kind of really uh, sock it to the Christians? Well, there's definitely an element of both. There certainly is an element of preaching to the choir and and trying to rally secularists and humanists and, and atheists against what I consider to be the really terrifyingly maladaptive religious certainties of their neighbors. I mean, we have something like 53% of Americans who think the universe is 6,000 years old, and something like that number think Jesus is going to going to appear uh, any day now and, and magically rectify all the problems we create on this planet. So there are a lot of people believing some very scary things in our own society, and this is to say nothing of the Muslim world. And so I'm trying to make the, the shortest possible argument against this kind of religiosity, and it's directed at Christians. It's, it's a direct response to much of the email I received in response to the end of faith. But, you know, I don't really have any illusions about what percentage of my readers are likely to be fundamentalists. I think it's, it's very likely to be a book that is bought and read by people who are already concerned about the problem of religious fundamentalism. Most of those people who are already concerned about fundamentalism, they're pro-science, they're people who are steeped in what we'd call the scientific outlook. They might not be hardcore atheists, might not be part of the atheist or the secular humanist movements, but uh, they look at science rather than religion to answer the big questions about our place in the universe. Let's get to something basic. You use science, the scientific outlook, to support your attacks on religion. But religion is bigger than science for most people on the planet. Religion is something the majority of people on the planet seem to find to be the most important things in their lives. Let me ask you, why not just live and let live? Why do you have to be so doggedly contrary to the most cherished beliefs of most everybody out there? Can't a person steeped in the scientific outlook just kind of go his merry way and let the religious people 